Hello, second grade friends. It's Miss Smith. I am here to help you with week three, second grade. So make sure you have this packet ready. I hope you're all doing well. I'm missing you so bad. Ah! <sighs> Hopefully we'll be together again soon. All right, guys. So this week we are going to do the same thing a little bit each day. Uh, let's start with day one. Together today, we are going to fill out our vocabulary chart together. So I'll be giving you the pictures and the definitions. Also, make sure you go to the first page in your story after this and answer the questions about number one. And then go back to the second grade playlist on my YouTube channel and check out the Britannic Rec Dive because it's going to show you what um, the person in our story gets to see when she dives into the ocean. Okay, on day two, we will have all of our vocabulary words finished. So in your book, the page number is in your packet. You can find the pages where you will review vocabulary on your own with their examples and completing sentences. And you can get back on here because I'm going to read our story, Dive Teams, with you for day two. Check out day three. It will be your turn to read the story by yourself. There are some questions about the story. You can go back and underline where you find the answers. So using those good text evidence skills I know you have. On day four, there will be a, a paper that you write uh, at least four jobs that you found in our story. Okay, so try to find at least four jobs because our story is about a team and it takes all these people doing their job on the team so to make it work. So it's very important that you see how many people and what uh, special things they can all do on their team. And then day five, you know, is the field trip. You've already went on two places the last two Fridays. Today, pick a third place that you have not gone to yet. And the last page in your packet says virtual field trip three. So you can play the games and watch the videos on there. After that, write and let me know where did you go? What did you see? What did you like? Would you uh, like to recommend this trip to someone else? And draw a picture on the back. All right, friends, that was just a quick overview of week three. You know, if you have any questions, your parents can always email me or dojo message me. Let's go ahead and get started with day one, and that will help you with all of your other activities this week. All right, so for day one, you do need the vocabulary chart, the uh, next page in your packet. It will say dive teams. So make sure you have this and your pa or pencil ready, because here we go. All right, the first word in your chart starts with a C. This is a big word. Communicate. Find communicate on your paper, point to it, and say communicate. Okay. Communicate means to make someone know or understand something. So in this picture, it says people use phones to communicate. So if you are communicating, you want to let someone know something. Okay? Maybe you want to let them know you forgot your homework. Maybe you want to let them know you're feeling sick. Maybe you want to let them know you're hungry. <laughs> So communicating just means you're trying to uh, let other people know something. And we communicate in a lot of different ways. Uh, you might call somebody on the phone, you might text them, you might send them an email, um, so you can talk to people right in front of you, you can do videos like this. <laughs> so there's lots of ways to let uh, people know um, something and to help them understand what you want to say. 
So let's go ahead and put communicate up. All right, it means to make someone know something. And you can make them know something by talking, by writing a letter, lots of ways, okay? So communicate means to make someone know something. All right, remember you can always pause here if you need more time to write the definition. You can rewind and listen to it again also. All right, let's move on with our next word on the list. It starts with a T. And this word is tasks. All right, find it, point, and say tasks. So tasks are jobs or pieces of work that someone has to do. I'm sorry guys, my hairband just broke. Please forgive me. <laughs> okay, in this picture it says washing dishes is one of my tasks at home. So tasks are just like uh, little jobs that you have to do. So your chores at home might be some of your tasks for home. You have a packet for me, you have a packet from your classroom teacher. Each day you have different tasks. They're just little um, pieces of work that you have to do, okay? All right, so let's write tasks. So ta ta tasks are pieces of work. So some of your um, sentences you might write about some of the tasks you have at home. You might say, I have many homework tasks because those are pieces of work that you have to do. Okay. So tasks are just pieces of work. All right, let's move on to the next one. Next word on our list starts with a D. This word is diver. All right, so point and say diver. A person who swims deep underwater for a long time is a diver. In this example, it says the diver swims under the water. All right, so let's get that up. A person who swims deep underwater for a long time. A person who swims deep underwater. All right, so um, today I think when you watch the video about the Britannic, uh, the shipwreck, you will be able to see some divers in that video. They have to wear a lot of uh, equipment so that they can breathe that far down under the water and for a long time. So that might help you think of some good sentences to write on your chart. So diver means a person who swims deep underwater. All right, let's get the next word. It starts with an E. That word is experienced. So point to it and say experienced. Someone who knows a lot about something from doing it many times is experienced. So in this picture, it says the pilot is experienced at flying. So this is not her first time flying a plane. If you are experienced, 
It means she knows how to do it well because she's had to do it so many times. Your second grade teacher is experienced because she has had to teach second grade so many times. <laughs> so you can think of any job you know, someone that's had that job for a long time and maybe use them as an example for experienced. You can be experienced even in sports if you've played that sport for a long time and you know a lot about it. All right, so experienced means someone who knows a lot and has done it many times. So you uh, would like to have an experienced doctor if you're sick because you want somebody that knows a lot about the body, knows a lot about medicine, has helped take care of people many, many times that would be someone you would want them to be experienced. I also want an experienced pilot. <laughs> I want to know that they know how to fly that plane because I sure don't. <laughs> so experienced means someone who knows a lot and has done it many times. Alright, let's check out the next word. It starts with a G. This word is gear. Okay, so find it and say gear. Gear means any tools, clothes, or other things used for a certain job or activity. So in this example, it says firefighters wear special gear to fight fires. So they do have to have um, special equipment. Gear and equipment are kind of the same thing. They have to have special jackets that are fireproof so they don't catch on fire if they walk into fire. They have to wear gloves to protect their hands. They have to wear helmets to protect their heads in case something falls in a building. They have to wear this mask uh, and an air tank on their back so that they can breathe somewhere if there's a lot of smoke. This is just one example. Um, people who play sports have to have certain equipment to play different sports. You maybe have to have a ball or a bat or um, maybe you have to wear elbow pads or knee pads. Maybe you have to have um, a racket to hit a ball. So different sports need different gear as well. Lots of jobs need different gear. If I were um, a chef, I would need lots of kitchen gear, bowls, spoons, mixers, all kinds of things like that. Okay, So gear just means your tools, your clothes, or anything you need to do uh, your job or activity. Okay. So tools, clothes, and other things to do an activity or job. All right, so you might think of something, either someone's job or an activity, um, like sports um, or hobby, like painting. Um, just think of something that people might do and what are some things they would need to be able to do that. That is all gear. Okay, So gear are the tools, clothes, and other things to do an activity or job. We have made it to our last word today. 
it also starts with an X or an E. It's in the last word on your list. It is expert. So point and say expert. An expert is someone who knows a lot about something. In this picture, it says, the man is a computer expert. Look, he's got all kinds of computers and machines and wires behind him. He's got a computer in his hand. That means he knows a lot about computers. I am not a computer expert. <laughs> So you can even say in your sentence something that you're not an expert about. Um, so you might think of uh, your parents, if they have a job and they're, they are really good at it and they know a lot about it, they might be an expert at their job. Ms. Sparrow is an expert at being a principal. She knows a lot about that job and how to do it well. So it can be a job, it can be um, a sport. Maybe some of you are experts about things. It can be even a subject in school. Maybe you know a lot about math or social studies. You could be an expert. Lots of times people like to choose um, what they're an expert at to be their job when they grow up. So maybe you really like computers too, and one day you'll be a computer expert. Okay? So that just means uh, someone who knows a lot about something. So let's write that. Someone who knows a lot about something. Here we've got it. An expert is someone who knows a lot about something. And it could be anything. <laughs> All right. All right, friends, that was our last word for today. Remember, if you didn't hear them all or you missed one, rewind. Go back and listen again, push pause, and you can see the definitions on the board. Because once you get all the definitions, it'll be your turn to think of a sentence and use the word in an example sentence and then draw a quick picture. So if I said a doctor is an expert about the body, because they have to know your body, then that might be my sentence and then I would draw a picture of a doctor. All right, so once you finish the vocabulary chart today, make sure you go ahead and look at the first page of your story and answer the questions for number one. It'll help you to start thinking about um, what you see in the pictures and making some predictions for this story and what might happen. And check out the Britannic Rective on our playlist so you can see under the water the same things that the divers see. It will help you to understand the story that we read. So come on back tomorrow for day two and look for second grade dive teams. That's where you're gonna find me and we'll be reading the story together. All right guys, remember to email or dojo message me if you have any questions or need help. And if not, happy learning at home. I will be seeing you again real soon. Bye-bye.